Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I'm going to answer some questions about the Mustang build that have nothing to do with the Mustang itself. And maybe I'll make some of the clean freaks really happy. So let's see what we got in our garage. So you guys have been watching the Mustang build and you've been seeing some cars in the background and a lot of you have asked questions about them. So today I'm going to answer them. Now not all these cars are mine, some are friends, some are family. They just basically spend the winter here. Some are pretty rare, so we'll go through them, I'll tell you a little bit about them and move everything around because i got to make some room to work on the Mustang. Now if you've noticed, I have some very primitive tools for this build. It's because we don't normally work in this building, it's basically just for storing cars. The Mustang is going to be the first car, other than the G8, that I actually did any kind of work on in this building. Oh yeah, there was a dirt alley too, but all I did was strip the interior. So let's start with the first car. Okay, so the first car isn't even really a car. It's our case skid steer. We use it to plow the snow and move heavy things around. It's not fancy, but it gets the job done. It's got a cop motor a 350 cubic inch plant. It's got cop tires, cop suspension, cop shocks. It's the model made before catalytic converters so they'll run good on regular gas. It's not the Bluesmobile, but if you're from Chicago, it's kind of cool. So once upon a time before fuel injection, you had to actually pump the gas to get the car to start. So I believe this is a 1973 Chevy Bel Air. It's a police car replica. The actual police cars were actually Biscaynes. Bel Air was just too fancy. It's painted the authentic Chicago police car colors. And there's a history behind it. The owner's father was an investigator for the city of Chicago and drove a car just like this. So he wanted one. So this one came along and he bought it. He takes it to parades and car shows. It's not a super nice looking car. The paint job isn't the best, but for driving through a parade or sitting at a car show, it's just cool to look at. The siren, everything else works too. So this is a 1993 Corvette convertible. It's the 40th anniversary edition. It's the classic Corvette colors. It's white with a bright red interior, just like they were back in 1953. It's got a 5.7 LT1. It's not super fast, but it's a lot of fun to drive. It's got pretty low miles on it. And even though it's a Corvette, it's not the rarest car we have in the building. So if you've watched my channel for a while, you've probably seen this car. If you haven't, the link's up there. This was a flood car when I bought it. I fixed it up, and now I drive it every day during the summer. It's a 2009 Pontiac G8 GXP, and it's a manual. Somewhat of a rare car, but it's got a ton of miles on it, so I don't mind driving it. So if I could have ordered this car from the factory, this is exactly how I would have ordered it. All black interior, white exterior, with a sunroof and a manual transmission. Makes this car one of 77. I got lucky that I even found it in the auction and that I got it at such a great price.
Only the GXP versions came with the 6.2 LS3, and only 700 and some came with a manual transmission. There's also the old 1961 Oldsmobile Starfire. Now, I'm not digging this one out because that would take quite some time. It's a pretty rare car. If you've ever seen Full House, yes, I'm that old. This is the car that they're driving around in the beginning. I believe that one was a 62. This one needs a little restoration. Okay, this one needs a lot of restoration. But it's a pretty cool car. Maybe one day it'll find the road again. And if the gas tank hadn't rotted out, I guarantee you, this thing would still run. So this is another one you guys asked about a lot. It's my 93 GMC Typhoon. And even though it looks like a barn find, it's been mine for over 20 years. It's got a little over 40,000 miles on it, and it was a daily driver back before I got it, so it needs a little bit of cleaning up. One of these days I'll get to it, but it hasn't even left the storage building in two years. And it's definitely not leaving this year, because I got a Mustang to build. So, I'll drive the G8 and this thing will sit. Maybe next year, we'll get to it. But before we put it back, we're gonna have to wash it up. So if you guys are bored and wanna do a little research, I'll put some links in the description below on some of the background of some of these vehicles. everything in there is cool. Of course you guys already know the Mustangs. If you don't, link's up there. So this car, straight out of the classic gangster movies, is a 1947 Buick Super. It needs a lot of restoration work, and it ordinarily wouldn't be cool, but it's old, it's complete, it runs, and it drives. And it's for sale if anybody wants a project. So if you're interested, let me know. It's got a trunk that could fit quite a few bodies. I mean, lots of cargo. So it's got an inline eight cylinder and a three speed manual transmission on the column. Truth be told, this is the first three on the tree I've ever driven. Yeah, I'm old, but I'm not that old. So now we're gonna wash up all the GMCs on the property. The Dirt Nolly, the Typhoon, and the Terrain. The Terrain, it's not special, but I need to take some pictures of it because it's going up for sale. In addition to all the rare cars that hang out in this building, some of the boring builds make it here before the titles come back and they're ready to sell.
So now that it's clean, it's time to put it away for at least another year. A little history on this truck. I bought it used from a dealer. The only vehicle I've ever purchased used from a dealer. It didn't need any work. Uh, the only reason I did is because, well, you couldn't find one. I wanted white with gray, and those were hard to find. My only other choice would have been blue, uh, and those were almost impossible to find. So I had to go to a dealer. I bought it. I financed it. It was the last car I ever financed. I just had to have it, and the quickest way to get it was just to sign the papers and walk out the door. I got a pretty good deal on it. There were some rust spots. Somebody changed the quarter glass and probably didn't use any primer on there before they put the urethane on, so it started to rust a little bit. So I nitpicked it, talked them down. I walked out for less than I thought I was going to pay for it and was pretty happy about it. I've enjoyed it, uh, but I just don't get to drive it as much as I should. So maybe next year. I've been saying that for like five years now. We have not one, not two, but three Buick Riata convertibles. These are all 1990s. They're a pretty rare car, at least for the convertibles. They made a bunch of the regular coupes. They were all hand built. It was kind of a big deal, I guess. I don't know, I never saw the attraction. Although this one is kind of special. This is probably the only one I like. So this was a Select 60. These were not available for sale. These were given to the top selling Buick dealerships around the country and they could do whatever they wanted with it. It came with special white wheels, white interior, white and red interior, uh, and it had some special badging on it. They only had 60 of them and this is one of them. So they only made a few thousand of these convertibles in 90 and even fewer in 91. But they only made 60 of this Select 60. It has a 3.8 liter engine. And this was pretty much the bulletproof one before GM went to plastic intake gaskets and plastic intakes. 300,000 miles was nothing for these. The transmissions were pretty much bulletproof. Even though the car's not the coolest, it was definitely super reliable. And we have the McCormick Farmall. It's a 19 old and it's red. And that's all I know about it. I was told it runs. So it ran when it was parked, like the ad always says. I know these things are worth a couple bucks when they're all restored, and this one's pretty much complete. It'd make a cool project, just not the kind I'm into. Sorry safety experts, you lost on this one. This is one big rolling OSHA violation. No safety gear whatsoever. Back then, we died like men. So in addition to making you guys a video to hopefully relieve some of your boredom, I did all this so that I could move stuff around so I could work on the Mustang. Now everything's positioned so that I have a little bit of room and I can get a little bit done. But I can only go so far. When it comes to the big stuff and I have to start lifting the body off, I'm going to need the rest of these cars gone. So I'm going to have to wait until the world is open again before I can do that. But in the meantime, I'm going to get everything ready so that hopefully when the world is open again, I'm ready to go. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the lockdown bonus video. I know you guys are probably tired of Netflix and everything else, so maybe you'll even like my videos. I know they're kind of boring. It's my thing. Let me know if you guys want to see any of these cars a little closer or know more about them. I can try to make some of those videos uh, if I'm having time to drag all these cars back out again um, or do them in the future. The next time the world shuts down, which I hope isn't soon, but whatever. So like this video if you found it interesting, share it if you think somebody else might. Subscribe to see more, hopefully, builds. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Stay safe and stay healthy.